Welcome to the basic overview demo of zone advanced billing. In this video, we're going to cover what zone advanced billing is from a high level, as well as cover some basic process flows like the creation of a brand new subscription, the rating process, as well as the billing process. So first, let's start off with a high level of what zone advanced billing is. And sometimes it's easier to start off with what zone advanced billing is not. So it's not a third party application where you're going to have to build an integration between NetSuite and zone advanced billing. It does not have its own database where you have to reconcile data between one table and another. Zone advanced billing is completely built within the NetSuite environment leveraging some of the native NetSuite platform capabilities like the abilities to create custom records and custom fields and scripts and workflows. Uh, so if you're familiar with bundles within NetSuite, Zone Advanced Billing is a pre-built and managed bundle. So by that, I mean that you can easily install it into your account. And then also we manage it in terms of upgrades. So we're consistently adding new features and functionality that we can easily uh, push and update and install into your current NetSuite environment. So some of the benefits that you see by zone advanced billing being completely built within your NetSuite environment is that it works seamlessly with other modules or records within NetSuite. So you're still leveraging the same customer master list that you have, the same item master list that you have, and it works really well with other NetSuite modules such as NetSuite Advanced Revenue Management, Inventory, Project Management, or OneWorld. So let's start off with a high level process flow of zone advanced billing. The first record that we start with is what we call a subscription record. Now the subscription represents the contract that you have with the customer. You're going to capture things like the term start and end dates on the subscription. You can attach a PDF copy of the contract to the subscription. And this subscription is linked to your already existing customer record within NetSuite. Now as child records to the subscription, we have what's called subscription items. And subscription items represent the different um, components or performance obligations that are part of that contract. So a good example here is sometimes contracts consist of an upfront implementation fee or a setup fee, a fixed monthly charge or a fixed quarterly charge, and then as well as maybe a third variable type item that's based on some level of consumption. So within these different subscription items, you're going to configure all of the different pricing and the billing configurations for each one of those components. Depending on how you configure those subscription items from a billing and a pricing perspective, we're going to generate what's called charges. And charges ultimately become line items on an invoice or a sales order. Collectively, this forms what we call the subscription plan. And the subscription plan can be unique customer by customer. So if every single customer has their own unique pricing, we can have unique subscription plans for each one of your customers. You can also leverage subscription plans for some more standard pricing. So a lot of times our customers have a standard model, a premium model, and an enterprise type model. So you can leverage subscription plans so that you can easily replicate these subscriptions customer by customer. Now that we have the subscription plan set up, we're ready to start billing for these subscriptions. But before I start billing, in particular use cases like a variable or consumption-based billing, we need to bring in that consumption and map it against these subscriptions plans. And the most common use case that we see is that this consumption or this usage is stored in an external or proprietary system. So there are a number of ways that we could bring in that consumption into NetSuite. And the most common is through an API integration. So Zone Advanced Billing has an API wrapper so that you can integrate Zone Advanced Billing with your proprietary system to automatically feed NetSuite usage records or even the creation of subscriptions and the creation of subscription items. Alternatively, a lot of our customers leverage a CSV export and import process between the proprietary system and NetSuite to bring in usage. So now that we've brought in that usage data and we've mapped it to our subscriptions, we need to run what we call a rating process. And the rating process says, do all the math. 
Each one of my customers may have their own unique pricing. Each one of my customers has their own unique consumption. And we need to do the math to calculate what we should bill this particular customer for this particular billing run. Now that all the charges have been accurately calculated, we need to run the final process in zone advanced billing, and that process is called create orders. Now, depending on your use case or your order to cash process, there's a couple different options that we have in terms of the transaction that we create. We can create either a sales order or an invoice. In some cases, it makes a lot of sense to use a sales order. For instance, when you have inventory that needs to be fulfilled, you can run the fulfillment process off of the sales order. Or in some cases, it makes sense to go directly to the invoice. Either way, these are native NetSuite records. The sales order, the invoice, and the payment is the native NetSuite functionality. So your collections and your invoice process still remains the same as it would even without zone advanced billing. So that's the high level process flow of zone advanced billing. In this demonstration, we're going to set up a basic subscription, but if you're interested in seeing some other detailed use cases like prepaid usage, minimum commitments, consumption, and even subscriptions including hardware, please see some of our other videos. So before we create a subscription, I just want to go over how we would install Zone Advanced Billing into your NetSuite environment. And I'm logged in as an administrator role right now. And if I go to Customizations, Suite Bundler, Search and Install Bundles, here's where I can see a list of all of the bundles that's within your NetSuite environment. You probably have a list that looks similar to this. And if I scroll down at the bottom, you'll see I have Zone Advanced Billing that's installed within this account. And you can also see what version of Zone Advanced Billing that you're on as well, because like I said earlier, we're constantly adding new features and pushing these new features out to our customers. So you can see it and make sure that you're on the current environment of Zone Advanced Billing. Now, once that's installed within your account, you get a couple of things. The first is from a setup perspective, and this is more meant for your administrator, and this is more meant for us during implementation. Well, we're gonna set up all of your different price books, your billing profiles, your different types of rate plans, all of the administrator and configuration uh, that you would need to set up zone advanced billing. The second piece that you get is more from the end user's perspective. So how do I create new subscriptions, create new items, manage master contracts, enter usage, all of which we'll cover in further videos. So let me change roles to my controller where we can create a brand new subscription. And if you're familiar with NetSuite already, you'll know that there's a number of different ways that I can navigate throughout the system to create different transactions. And the same goes for zone advanced billing. So for instance, I can come here to Customers, Zone Advanced Billing, and easily create a new subscription. I can global search for new subscription. I can add this to my favorites, or I can even access it on the customer record. So I'll global search for AABB software, and let's get, take a look at the customer record. While I'm on the customer record, I can click Create New and select Zab Subscription. I can also see all of my subscriptions for this customer under the sub tab. So here I can see historical subscriptions. Some of these are ongoing or some of these are expired, but I can easily drill into the details of each one of these subscriptions. So let's go ahead and create a subscription from scratch using my favorites. The first thing we want to do is select a customer and name this subscription. In this case, I'll just do basic demo subscription, but during implementation, we'll work with you to determine what the best naming convention is for your subscriptions. I'll set a start date for today, and I want this to last for a year. The next, we'll select the charge schedule, and the charge schedule determines, you know, what is the frequency of billing that we're going to do for this subscription? And you can see there's a lot of different options in terms of quarterly, annually, bi-weekly, monthly. In this case, I'm going to set this up monthly charges on the anniversary date, that meaning the 28th of every single month. In further videos, you'll see how when we set up charge schedules, you can actually have different cadences for each one of your subscription items. Now from here, I can do one of two things. I can start adding subscription items one by one manually, which we'll cover in some further videos, or I can leverage what's called a subscription plan. So a subscription plan is essentially a template 
for a subscription that will default in you know, what items are included within this subscription, what the pricing of those items should be, and then how I should bill those items. So I'll go ahead and select my standard plan and we'll see what's defaulted within my standard plan. So as part of my standard plan, we have three different subscription items. I have a fixed monthly fee, a one-time setup fee, and then a variable usage charge. And you can see each one of these items has their own rate type and their own pricing. For the fixed, I'm going to bill a fixed of $5.99 at a quantity of 10 every single month. And then for the one-time charge, I'm going to bill upfront for $10,000. And then the usage, those are also going to be billed on a monthly basis at a rate of $8 per unit. So those are the three subscription items that are included within my standard subscription plan. If I click on the charges and minimum sub tab, here is where I can see a list of all of the charges that were created out into the future for those three subscription items. I can filter this list by type. So for instance, I can filter this to show me all the one-time charges. And in this case, I have a one-time setup fee that I'm going to bill in the amount of $10,000 on the very first day of the contract. I can further filter this to show me all of the fixed amounts. So here I can see 12 charges out into the future for $5.99 at a quantity of 10 for a total amount of $5,990 per month that's going to be billed on the 28th of every single month. And then lastly, I can see my usage charges. Now my usage charges are all rated at zero because we have not br brought in any usage yet. But I can see that all of these will be billed on the 28th of the month, but in this case, it's in arrears for a service period of the month before. The next step would typically be to bring in usage, which we'll show in detail in some further videos. But because I'm billing usage in arrears, I'm not worried about it for my first invoice. My first invoice should only include the one-time setup fee of $10,000, and the first fixed monthly cost of 5,990. So now that we've set up the subscription, I'm ready to generate my first invoice. So I do that by going to customers, zone advanced billing, and running a process that we call create transactions. This screen shows a list of all of the subscriptions in the system that are ready to be billed. I can easily mark all of these and start generating invoices, or I can do a one-off basis. So in this case, you can see my basic demo subscription is at the top for a bill date of today, and I have fixed and one-time charges included on this invoice for a total amount of $15,990. So let's go ahead and select that and create transactions. Once that process is complete, I can go back to my subscription. I can refresh my subscription, and under charges, is where I'll see a list of transactions that were created for both of my charges. In this case, sales order 218 was created. So let's take a look at the transaction that was created within NetSuite. So here I have a native NetSuite sales order that's in a status of pending approval. That's for customer AABB software that has two line items on it, both for my fixed monthly fee and my upfront cost of $10,000. Here is where you'd run through the native NetSuite functionality in terms of any approval process that you have on your sales order, as well as the billing process. So I'll go ahead and click approve on this sales order. Once the sales order is approved, the invoice is ready to be generated. I'll also mention that if you ever had any inventory items on this sales order as well, this would also kick off the fulfillment process. So now I'm finally ready to generate my invoices and I can do that one of two ways. I can do it from my dashboard in bulk with all my customers, or I can just simply click next bill directly from the sales order. And this will generate the invoice transaction that will ultimately be delivered to the customer via email. So finally, we have our last transaction here, which is a native NetSuite invoice record that can be delivered via email. 
Uh, if you're not sending invoices and instead you're capturing credit cards and charging credit card transactions, you can do that as well by storing the credit card on the customer record and then using na native NetSuite functionality to authorize and charge credit card transactions. So these are a few sample invoices that we've created for our customers that have all the necessary information like subscription items, service periods, quantities, and accurate rates available to the customer so that they're able to pay the invoice. That concludes our video on the setup of a basic Zone Advanced Billing subscription. Please see some of our other videos for more common use cases like prepaids, minimum commitments, and inventory. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see a live video demonstration, please contact us at the email or the number on your screen. Thanks.